I'm gonna have the camera open, and then I'm gonna put video mode. See, you can see all of them. So I'm gonna pick on Cody <laughs> for a moment. Cody, give me, uh, I don't know, tell me who's your favorite character in The Lord of the Rings and why in like a minute. Man, you really picked the wrong series. I do not enjoy Lord of the Rings, but I'm gonna go with Gandalf. <laughs> all right, tell me why Gandalf is your favorite character. Because I'm a sucker for the trope of a old, wise, and wizard mentor. And also the portrayal of him in the movies is just phenomenal. Alright. So I'm going to stop the recording now. And all we need to do is have a little bit of... Oh, hold on. Uh, I don't want to do that. Okay, so it's only showing the video on the screen. You're not able to see the controls. But uh, if I hold up my iPad, maybe right up here, you'll see that there is a video bar down here that I can click on, and then I will have some options for my video. That is just to trim the ends of the video by hitting edit. So that's gonna allow me to trim the opening few seconds of the video, or the ending seconds so that I can only keep the part that is relevant. Yes. But you can't cut out like points in the middle of it, right? Like it has to be beginning or end? Correct. So this, again, this is the most basic way to do this. That would imply that you're either reading off of the script or that you practice several times what you're doing because you're going to have to do it all in one take. Uh, but again, I'm starting with the most basic way to do it and then I'm going to be moving up to more polish. So having done that, Having trimmed at the bottom of the screen, the first few seconds of the video, the last few seconds, so that there's no dead air, I can play the video to make sure that it plays the way that I want it. Once I've done all those requisite changes, I can hit done, save video, and now I have a video file ready that I can upload to YouTube. So let's go now to youtube.com. So if you have a school email, which you all do, congratulations, you also have a YouTube account already, so you do not need to create a new one. Everybody see what I'm doing over there? No. Okay, so here's the mouse. I'm going to click on my profile picture, and I'm going to go to where it says YouTube Studio. So it's giving me the warning that that's going to be the name that will appear, the photo that will appear, and, you know, agreeing to the YouTube Terms of Service. So I'm going to create the channel. Okay. Hmm. Welcome to YouTube Studio. Continue. And I'm going to move any of that. I'm just going to close out all these pop up windows. All right. So, very, right up here, it's going to give us the option to upload videos. So, here it's going to ask you to drag and drop video files, or you can click here to open the selection screen. I'm going to scroll down to my Photos app. Okay, so hasn't synced over the air yet. So I'm just going to transfer that file from my iPad to my computer manually. Ideally, if you're you know using this in the same Wi-Fi network, eventually the video will go from your iPad or your iPhone to your computer automatically. But for the sake of time here, I'm just going to send it myself. Were you able to get to your YouTube channel? Yes. Okay. It looks a little different, but... Okay. So now I'm going to select the file. It saved onto my downloads. Uh, and here we go. It's IMG0017.mov.
That is the file that I created with Cody as the subject. And I'm going to open. And that's going to begin the upload of the video. You can see down here how that progress is going. And now you can go up here and change some of the details. So I'm going to give it a different title. Cody is wrong about <laughs> the Lord of the Rings. You can add a description to your video. Cody says he doesn't <laughs> like it. And this is objectively the wrong take, fam. Okay. Um, you can upload a custom thumbnail. If you don't do that, it'll just auto-generate one by taking a frame from the video. Um, I like to do custom thumbnails because if you let it do it at random, it almost seems to know when to pick you doing a silly face. Mm -hmm. The worst possible the moment, right? Yeah. So I'm going to use, um, oh, it's asking me to verify my phone number. Well, if you want to be able to use this feature, I guess you have to give Google your phone number. It was, there we go. It was just a scan. So I'm going to use this picture of a, of a nebula because it's the first thing that popped up, but you could create your own thumbnail by creating it on uh, you know, Canva or any other place where you can create custom thumbnails, or you can even just take a nice picture of yourself so that you don't leave it up to chance. Or if you wanted, you could just like pause your video in a place where you're not making a weird face and just screenshot it and just drop that in. That is okay. correct. There we go. Uh, you can start a new playlist for your video. So let's say if this were for Dr. Vader Say's class, you could create and the visibility here. Okay, so visibility this is important. Public means that anybody on the internet can find and watch this video. Private means that anybody with the link can find and watch this video. Unlisted means that only you can watch this video. That means that if you log into a computer, you have to log in on your account to be able to watch the video. So I'm going to say we're going to go private just because we're going to submit this via Populi and let's say that you're, you're not ready to show the world uh, your Lord of the Rings hot takes. So I'm going to create it as a private playlist. I'm going to select it and hit done. Okay. Uh, YouTube requires you to answer if this video is made for kids or not. For our purposes, it doesn't matter because we're not going to be putting ads on the video. But I'm still going to say no, it's not for kids. Um, so you get the racy ads. Yes. So age restriction, you know, you can restrict your video to be only watchable by people who are 18 or over. I don't think that applies, but it's there if you ever need to. Next it's going to give you the option to add subtitles and an end screen. I don't think this applies to anybody who is um, just submitting an, an assignment. Uh, these are a little bit more if you're gearing towards creating YouTube content on a regular basis. You'll see that the options are grayed out on my, uh, on my account because I don't have any followers. So YouTube is saying, why do you need to do this if you don't have any followers? How do you ungray it? If you want to add subtitles, um, it you would have to have followers on your account. So call your mom, tell her to follow you, and then they'll ungray. Yeah. Okay. Although you know, my mom shouldn't use computer. But. Do you know if you have to like manually create the subtitles or what? Um, I think it gives you the option of using like computer generated subtitles, or it also allows you to upload your own subtitles. So you're gonna help hit next. It is checking the video for copyright. If it finds that you have any music or images or video content that is copyrighted, it'll give you a notification here. Uh, and again, for our purposes, that doesn't matter because we're not planning to monetize this. This is just to submit a, uh, an assignment. But if it had a copyright issue, it would just make it ineligible for monetization and it would make it, let, it would decrease the visibility of the video. Okay, so the last check, it's asking again if 
you want to make the video private unlisted or public I'm going to stick with private it gives you the option to schedule when the video publishes we're just going to publish it right away and we're going to hit save and refresh and the refresh button go there it is Okay, let's go look at our content. As you can see, it says here that the video is processing in HD. That just means that for another couple of minutes, if you click on the video, it'll only play in standard definition, but that'll go away probably by the time we're done. And we can come back and look at that. So I'm gonna click on the video and it gives you the option to edit some stuff. So you can see here, now it has a few uh, freeze frames from the video that you can use as a new thumbnail, or you can stick with the one you uploaded. You know, it gives you the option to change it from what uh, playlist it is, or the visibility of the video. It's still working on updating the video quality. Since I didn't make any changes, it didn't change anything. But let's say if I added an exclamation point, I can now hit save, and that'll change the video uh, information. This right here, video link, you can copy that, and you can go to populate. My courses, theological ethics, and here's where I would paste, mm -hmm. and when I hit post, it'll show up as a link first and then when I finish processing it'll actually show up as a thumbnail. I'm going to delete that because nobody in our class needs to to see Cody's embarrassing takes on Lord of the Rings. So let's watch the video. Yeah, that's now. Mm -hmm. And that would be it. This is the basic way. If you are just looking to submit your assignment, that's it. You're done. But now, let's say that you want to up your game a little bit. You want to create a little bit more quality on your video. So now we're going to have to introduce a new element to this all, which is using a video editing software. I think uh, that unless you're planning to become a professional content creator using either iMovie for Mac or Windows Movie Maker for Windows is going to be plenty. It's going to have the features you need, like being able to edit different takes together, being able to add graphics to your video. It's going to have all those very basic features already built in, and you're not going to need to learn a complicated user interface like with Adobe After Effects or something more professional. Uh, if you want, if you're already a professional and you're able to use that, A, I don't know why you're watching this tutorial, but B, you know, go right ahead. You'll just, it'll just be a steeper learning curve. I think Windows Movie Maker for Windows or iMovie for Mac are going to do the job just fine. Uh, for two years at St. Michael's, when I was doing all the video content there, I used Windows Movie Maker, and it always seemed to be just fine for what I needed to do. So here, when you open Windows Movie Maker here, I'll start over from opening to the end. It's going to come up to this screen. It says Media and Projects. We're going to start a new project. It's going to be a movie. And we're going to have to import the media we're going to use. So we're going to go to our downloads. And I'm going to find the movie that Cody recorded. So now we have Cody's video right here. Yes. Now, is this the raw video? Or, mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. You're going from? So this is the raw video. And now we can do some other interesting things here. I can add... Uh, media by, come on, why isn't that letting me import? Okay. 
So I can preview this video here. All right, tell me why Gandalf is your favorite character. And that is just for me. Now, if I wanted to be part of the project, I need to start putting it down here. So I'm going to bring the video down to the timeline, and you'll see it'll give me a much more detailed control over what is going on in the video. So I can have, I can zoom in by pinching on the screen, and you can see it gives me even more fine granular control over the editing. So I'm going to clip out that first uh, part of the video. I'm going to pause the video right there. And I can go here on the edit and do it manually. Uh, but you'll notice that there's also some shortcuts over time. Those are going to be the easier way to do it as you memorize them. But for right now, I am just going to, um, let's see, modify. Here we go. Edit and modify are the two menus you're going to be looking at. If you make a mistake, does it have an undo function? Yes. Good. So that's going to be hit here, edit. So see if I can undo the ad. <clears throat> it takes away that video from there. And then edit, I can redo it. Okay. And I think when you're, um, for smaller edits, if you want to undo one, you can do Control Z, can't you? And yeah. You'll undo the most recent thing you did, just like in Word. Yeah, so here you, you see the shortcut is, uh, well, for Apple is Command-Z, for Windows Control-Z. Uh, and then redo is Shift-Command-Z. Uh, modify, we can split the clip. So here's where it gets a little tricky because on the, on the work area, you notice that if I click on the video, it gets this yellow highlight. You have to select something down here to be able to modify it. Otherwise, the program is not sure what you're modifying. So I'm going to click on that video. I'm going to make sure that the time marker is where I want it to be. So you can do that by using the space bar. So I'm going to click, modify, split clip. Now it split the video into two separate clips. This is the part I don't want, this is the part I do want. So I'm going to select the part I don't want and just hit delete on my computer, just the backspace. So now the video starts where I want it to start. So I'm going to check the same thing at the end. All right. I'm going to do the same thing here, command uh, modify, split clip, and I'm going to erase the part I don't want. Now, how, I heard the video, so you played it a little bit so you could see when the sound was? Yes. So you can zoom in so that you have complete control of where exactly you want to clip the video. So I'm going to click on it, use the space bar, and I can say that's where I want it to cut. Uh -huh. And now you're just going to come back and click on it again, click Control B. The thing is, my question is, how do you, how do you, you know, have you heard it, have you seen, how do you know that that's where you want to cut it? Is it? Mm, okay, I see what you're asking. Okay, yeah, let okay. me uh, turn up the volume so you can hear it. Because uh, you're going by the volume, you're going by what's being said? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. So if I start the video from the beginning, hit the space bar. So let's say I wanted to end after Mentor. I could end it right there. I can double check, make sure. Mentor. And then I'm going to click there and be Control B. Now let's say I don't want to delete this. Let's say that instead what I want to do is introduce a graphic in there. So now is where I'm going to go here, and I'm going to add a photo. And let's just say I'm going to use this photo of Bear because wow. it's right there. Yeah. 
You know there are real dog persons that have a photo album just dedicated to pictures of dogs. So I can now transfer this picture of Bear here by dragging it. <laughs> and now, now Windows Movie Maker does like this weird slide effect by default. We can change that. So you can see that it arbitrarily decides that it's going to display the image for four seconds. I can adjust that by clicking on the edges. And if you see right here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's say I just want to flash a picture of Bear for <laughs> two seconds. Get it down to two seconds. Then when you double click on the image, it's going to bring up some editing options for it. So I don't want it to do anything fancy. I just want it to show the image straight up. So I'm just going to set fit. Maybe you want to crop the image a little bit. Uh, there we go. I have to hit crop to fill. So I can adjust the size of the image that I want to show up. So now when I hit the video, it's going to show me there for two seconds and go on to Cody's uh, garbage opinion. Let's say that at the end, I want to give you a palate cleanser from Cody's garbage opinion. So I'm going to put another picture there. Same thing. I can add some special effects. I can crop. I'm just going to crop to fill. And I'm going to put bears to Could you do that to the video as well to kind of like get rid of the bottom and the top? Yes, you actually could. So if it's same thing, if you double click on a clip, <laughs> it'll bring up the menu and you can do um, crop to fill. So I'm going to change the video to just be a zoom in of Cody. Ooh, much nicer. Yeah. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other part of the video. Crop to fill. And check. Though if you were going to do this with like these interspersions, you'd probably want to do it before you put in the pictures of Bear. Correct. To make sure there's not like a subtle difference that would be jarring. That is correct. So unless you want there to be a difference, it's easier to do that before you split the clip. Yeah. Slow-mo. Well, and sometimes you might want to do that. Like, yeah. you know, how they do in the office, the picture just expands. All right, tell me what hand to hold is your character. So let's say right there, I wanted to zoom in on Cody's face. So your character. Character. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to click on it. Command V to split the clip. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the part that I want to zoom in. And then I'm going to make this window tighter on Cody. It's kind of hard to see on the thumbnail, but once I hit the check mark, you'll see the difference. So you'll notice that right now it's just doing a hard cut between all these different takes. Mm -hmm. So now what you can do is go up here and add some transitions. So the transitions are going to be able to move between the clips with a little bit more smoothness. Uh, my favorite one to use is the cross dissolve. I think it does a really good job of just moving along. So you'll see that by default it makes the transition last one second. So let's see what it looks like with a one second transition. So that's kind of slow, but we can make it faster or slower. So uh, my personal opinion is that 0.5 seconds is ideal, ideal uh, unless you purposefully want there to be a very distinct uh, fade in into the next uh, take. Like if you're um, doing like a promotional video and you're like changing subjects to mm -hmm. something new. Yes. 
So when it's just the same subject but changing the angle, I think a, five, a, a half a second transition is best. So let me show you what that looks like. Yeah. It's gentle, but not jarring. Yeah. yeah. Like it's just long enough that you like recognize what's happening, mm -hmm. but it's gone before your brain finishes like noticing it. Yes. So there are other transitions that you can play with. Uh, I am a, a faithful believer of the cross to solve, uh, and then the fade to black at the end of the video. So I can just come to the end of the video. <laughs> then it fades to black and the video ends. So I'm going to add, uh, just for fun, I'm going to add a cross blur when I'm transitioning to Bear's picture. Again, by default, it will last one second. So that's a one second long transition. I, let's say that I want to change that to five second transition. Oh, it says I can't. So the reason it says I can't is because the transition cannot be longer than the clip it's transitioning to. Since that is only a two second uh, clip, that means that at most I can only make this a two second transition. And then I can select this transition double click or uh, right click. Oh, it's not letting me copy it. Hmm. That's weird. And then, okay, I can just go up here to edit copy. So let's say if you don't want to have to manually adjust every transition, if you're going to be using the same transition over and over, you can just copy it, click on the place where you want to put the new one, and then paste. And then paste. It's not cooperating with me. Okay, I think it's because the clip is only so long. So I'm going to lengthen the clip just to show you because... There we go. I'm going to make it four seconds. So now... You're embarrassing me in front of my guest's computer. I'm glad it happens to you too. <laughs> You can always be certain that a computer is not going to work when you're trying to demonstrate it. Yeah, right? Okay, or so I'm just going to introduce a new blur and just change it to two seconds here and show you what that looks like. So now let's say that I wanted for the clip uh, for Cody's voice to keep going while it's showing an image of Bear. So I'm going to delete this transition here, and then I'm going to click on Cody's clip and move it underneath Bear. So you can see that as long as Bear's clip is longer, we're only going to see the audio of Cody's voice down here. But if I shorten the clip of Bear, shorten this clip. Okay, hang on. Detach audio, that's what it is. Okay, so I can detach the audio. And then shorten the visual. Yes, so then I can, if you hit shift, and then click, you can shorten both at the same time. If you just want to shorten the visual, you can do that. So you get you start to hear Cody's voice playing before the video of Cody starts playing. So I can shorten that even more here, and then just make sure I move the audio to correspond to where I want it to begin. 
Now, so that you don't get vocal desync, you want to select either the beginning or the end of the clip to match with the beginning or the end of the audio. Because uh, otherwise, you're just going to have to zoom in and look with a magnifying glass and make sure that the waveform matches with the mouth movements. And that's a lot of work. So my tip on that is sync the audio with either the beginning or the end of the clip so that you don't have to worry about the mouth movement being out of sync with the words. So here in this case, I just make sure that the end of the clip is aligned with the end of the audio. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to add a uh, cross to solve and see if it'll let me do the copy and paste. Nope, still won't. So I'm just going to add a cross to solve into the end. Let's change it to 0.5. So let's see what that looks like. And fade to black. So there you go, we have a video. So now let's say that here, instead of seeing just Cody sitting down, we want to add another picture of Bear. I can drag it above the video, and it'll play that above Cody's face. How did you stop it from doing that panning again? You go to the crop, and you... Yeah. yeah. Either crop to fit or just fit. Yes. Depending on what you want to do. Okay. All right. Tell me why Gandalf is your favorite character. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to have to go in a sec, but um, it might be helpful on your make or be planning to do this, but to show them how to create like a title mm -hmm. slide. Um, mm -hmm. The words, it begins just for the purposes of school or work videos. Yes, you might have a I was gonna. Yeah, that was what I was gonna get into next. But, but right before that, uh, what I wanted to show you is that if you see right here at the corners of the image, there's these little points. These are gonna allow you to fade into the image, fade in and fade out, so that it's not a hard cut. So when it comes to overlaying an image over the video, you're not gonna have as many transition options. It's just going to have a fade and you just get to control how long the fade is. But let's see what it looks like. So it right, fades so into, the video, into the image and out of the image. Let's say I want to begin the video with the image of Bear, so I can end the fade there. Oh, but it looks like it's only allowing me to do it symmetrically, so never mind. Just ignore what I just said. All right, so all of that, let's say I change my mind. I don't want that anymore. I'm going to erase it. Instead, I want to create a title uh, card. So if you go here to titles, you can use some of the preloaded ones. And I'm going to use this one. So I can add the title over footage. So you see it'll bring it up here. <laughs> All right, tell me why Gandalf is your favorite character. Okay, or if I click on it and move it here, it'll just do it on a black background. All right, tell me why Gandalf is your favorite character. Did you catch how that? input the text that you want. Yeah, so I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to delete that, and let's say I'm going to do a pixie dust. So when I click on it, when I double click on it, by default, it's going to overlay it on top of video. If you want that, that's fine. We can just click here. And then I can hit the space bar. <laughs> All right, tell me why Gandalf is your favorite character. Or, if you prefer it to be on a black background, you can just click on it and drag it to before the video. All right, 
Tell me why Gandalf is your favorite character. Now let's say that you actually don't want it over a black background. You want it over something a little prettier, like yet another picture of bear. So I can add a picture of bear, fit it, or crop to fill, and then I can come back to the titles tab and put the, the title card on top of the picture of bear. Okay, so you can see that I messed up the cropping, so I'm going to change it to be focused on bear. Well, the top of his head is awfully cute. Louise, I'm just curious, what's, what's the candy bars of it? I think that's <laughs> named after a filmmaker who invented yeah, it. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's why I'm curious It's about the it. slow pan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing about the Ken Burns effect is that, to me at least, I associate it most with like 80s or 90s commercials. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why Apple thinks that's still like the default that people want to add on their movies. Uh, because if you notice, anytime I add a still image, it defaults to the Ken Burns pan. Uh, and you can modify like the speed, it can like zoom into the image instead of just statically pan. There's some interesting things you can do with it. Um, I just don't think that, you know, for the purposes of this tutorial, we want to get to I agree. that. I think it's because he does historical documentaries. So mm. it makes sense for you to look at something and take your time panning up, down, or around. Mm. So that's also, where had, it comes from. There okay. He doesn't have video for, but just a still photo. It's a still photo, but like he would pan and like let you take in that image. Mm -hmm. while there's someone telling about it yeah. historically in a context. Ah, that, that actually makes a lot of yeah. sense because I'm thinking of like the Sarah, Mac Sarah McLaughlin, like, I will remember yeah. you. And it's like panning <laughs> through like a slideshow of yeah. like sad puppies. <laughs> um, okay, you're right. That, that there, so there are times when you want to play with around with the Ken Burns effect, but you know, you can, you can figure that one out. But I agree with you for this purpose. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to change this to my, the real title that I want, which is Cody's Bad Lord of the Rings Take. And I'm going to add a transition here. So let's see what that looks like. Let's change it again. Who is your favorite Lord of the Rings character? So, the last thing that I'm going to show you today before we export this video and upload it to YouTube is how to mess with the sound. Because if you notice, my voice is a lot louder than Cody's voice on this recording. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select the clip that I wanna change. I'm gonna zoom in. And you can see down here on the blue, mm -hmm. the waveform of the sound. So you can see that the parts where Cody's speaking, you can hardly see any movement. But then when I'm speaking, you can see the movement pretty high. So I'm going to start here, I'm going to click, and I'm just going by, by eyeballing it. So I see here that this is where my voice enters the frame. So I'm going to create a split here. Okay, so I'm going to click on the video, make sure the yellow outlines are on the clip, Command B, and now I can individually control the volume of the clip. So let's say I want to make Cody's voice louder, I'm going to click on the part of the video that has Cody speaking, and I'm going to raise the volume as high as it'll go. Let's see what that sounds like. I'm going to go with Gandalf. All right, tell me why Gandalf is your favorite character. So you see how it changes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that is. So I'm going to raise the volume here on Cody. Alternatively, I could just lower the volume on myself. 
you're kind of going to have to play around to see which one sounds better. So right now I'm turning Cody up, but here in a second I'll show you what it looks like if I turn myself down. I'm going to go with Nick Bell. <laughs> All right, tell me why Gandalf is your favorite character. It is I'm a stubborn old troop, um, an old wise and wizard from Jor. And Gandalf is a great So I'm going to have to raise the volume here at this clip as well. Jor. And, and also Drill in the movies is just a Now, how. I saw how you kind of got the, the how, how did you get the command to be louder? Oh, uh, you see this line here? Uh huh. This is the volume, the level line. So oh, okay. from zero okay. all the way to 400%. So now let's say that when you turn the volume up, just remember that any background noise is also going to be turned up. So sometimes instead of turning up the quiet part, you might just want to turn down the, the loud part. So I'm going to take Cody's back down to 100% which is, uh, I know that may sound a little confusing, why 100%? Well, because let's remember that right now it's turned up all the way to 400%. So I'm gonna turn Cody back down to 100%, and then I'm gonna turn myself down to, let's say 15%. Even then, I'm still gonna be louder than Cody, because you can see here that mm -hmm. the waveform for Cody's voice is really, really soft, and mine is still gonna be louder, even Okay. So then I would just have to make sure I turn Cody back down and everywhere that I turned him up. So to do that, you're just eyeballing the graphics. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's see the finished product. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see it in full screen, I can just rewind to the beginning and go into full screen right here. So there you go, there's my masterpiece completed. So I can make a few last minute adjustments over the uh, video itself, the video project itself. If you click here on settings, uh, you can add a theme. We're not gonna do that. Uh, you can add a filter to the whole video. So a filter is just gonna do some overall color correction. So you can go through some of these. What's that one? Yeah, so let's do Bless. So see, it changes the color scheme of the whole video. You can also add uh, filters to every clip, but, you know, individually, but uh, you can learn how to do that one later. Uh, I'm just going to show you for the whole video because, like, it's going to help you with consistency. Make sure that the color gradient is consistent all across, but uh, you can also do it individually, just so you know. It uh, has the uh, option to fade in from black at the beginning of the video and then fade out to black. Now we manually added a fade out to black at the end, so I can I can check or uncheck that. It's not going to change anything because we already added it manually. And now that our masterpiece is completed, we can export it. So up here, if you look at the mouse on the corner, top right corner of uh, iMovie. It's going to say share. I'm going to click and it's going to give me a few options. I can export it for email, which is going to make it a really compact file. I can export it for uh, save current frame, which just means that it, it'll just give you a series of photos of the video instead of a video. I can export it as a raw file, which is going to be huge. Uh, so, you know, I, the only reason I ever foresee you needing to do that is if you're sending this video to somebody else to include in a new video, mm -hmm. because they probably want the file size as big as possible 
for whenever they do any editing. So let's say if I was sending this video to, um, let's say to Eric, uh, for him to create a video for the seminary, I would want to export it as a raw file. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to publish it to YouTube. So uh, conveniently, they already have a setting that makes it the video the most compatible with YouTube and Facebook. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to ask me for a title. Uh, I'm going to call it Cody Baloney. It's going to let me uh, add a description directly. Cody is wrong about the Lord of the Rings. Sorry, Cody, you're my punching bag today. It's okay. Uh, I can add tags for if you want this video to be public, you can add search terms. So I could put Cody, Lord of the Rings. comma, Lord of the Rings. Bear. Yes. <laughs> Bear. Bear. Adorable. So that means that if this video is public, people can find it by searching these terms. However, since we're not going to make it public, we can just leave this field blank. Now, the resolution. Uh, iMovie seems to think that based on what is the content of the video, the most efficient file size is going to be 640 by 360. Now, the way that the computer figures that out is kind of complicated. It just basically looks at like the video, the subject, and it says, like, hey, you know what? This video doesn't really need to be anything more than this for it to look fine. So you can trust what the computer tells you, or you can say, nope, I want it to be HD anyway. So I'm going to select uh, 1080p as the output format, because I want this video to be HD. And I'm going to hit next, and it's going to tell me, where do you want to save this video? I'm going to save it to my downloads. So it's going to take a minute, depending on how old your computer is. And how big you... And how big the file size mm -hmm. is. So for me, this is taking a couple seconds. Uh, you know, if you have an older computer, it might take, it might be in hours. Just, you know, depends on the, on the hardware you're running. Uh, once it's finished, I am going to be able to go back to YouTube. And I am going to go to my dashboard and upload a video. I'm going to select the file, and here we're going to look for Cody Baloney 1080p, the movie, and hit open. Now here in the title, I don't want it to show that it's HD. I'm just going to erase that. I'm just going to leave it as Cody Baloney. I can add a new description, Cody Y. It's not finished processing, so it's not giving me the options yet. But, you know, just like before, I want to put it in Dr. Bader says class playlist. It is not made for kids. Hit next. It's checking. No copyright issues found. Good. And now I'm going to publish it as a private video. I can schedule publish, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hit save, and I can go to my content, and here we have Cody Baloney, and it's still processing the HD video. So let's give it a minute. Oh, there it goes. See, it auto-selected that, but if I want to choose a different thumbnail, I can go in here, and I want it to be that picture of Bear, because it's really cute. So let's watch the video. Start it from the beginning again. All right, I'm proud of this video, so let's copy the link go to the ethics and paste the link here.